Hey, good evening, everyone. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Borick, and this is going to be a quick preview to the Giants and Dodgers. The first time these rivals have met up in the playoff series preview. If you enjoy the content of the channel, please subscribe down below or on the easy-to-use widget at the top at the end of the video. Thank you, YouTube, for that. Also, let's just get right into this one again. Just like the Braves and the Brewers series is coming to play out on my TV over here as we speak, this is how this series sets up two great pitching matchups. You start with two good young pitchers, the emerging Logan Webb this year, with Walker Bueller, of course, on the mound in Game 1. The only difference um, for these teams are the Giants don't have a veteran that matches, obviously, the Max Scherzer just being dominant at first ballot Hall of Famer. Their veterans are more the Quatos that are coming back. That's a great wild card piece, I think, for the playoffs. So I don't know if they use him as a starter, but he has the experience. We've seen guys step up out of the pen. Like, look at what Lincecum did at the end of his career in, in the last World Series. He won, <clears throat> won excuse me, um, with the Giants being able to step up out of the pen. So he could maybe be that guy that's able to do that towards the tail half here of his career. Maybe he can start doing some stuff out of the pen here for those Giants. But they have Logan Webb, Walker Bjorgo, and that's a great pitching matchup. Then you got your Reyes, and you got Kevin Gosman. Then you probably have D. Scalfani matched up with Max Scherzer. So these teams both have very good pitching. The Dodgers still have great pitching, even with a absolutely ludicrous amount of injuries. They got Alexander, Clevenger, Duffy, Ferguson. Hamels obviously was there for a hot second. Kaoli, who's a very good reliever. Kershaw, unfortunately. Dustin May, who's electric. Jimmy Nelson, who was starting to look pretty good out of a pen. Uh, Sherfy, and that's it. So they got all those guys injured, but they still, because they have the money, they know how to spend, they know how to scout the pitching overall. They still got the Tryons out there. They got the Vasilla. They got the Corey Knebels of the world that are all very good. Obviously, Kenley Jansen. Bruce Star Gratterall is a great wildcard guy. You can start him if you want to to open probably go quite a few innings for you, or you could pitch him out of the pen and be an absolute dominant figure out of there. They have Phil Bickford as well, so they got good pitching even with all the injuries. The Giants, we already went over um, when it comes to their big three in pitching, but they do still have, I think I said, the Quatos of the world that maybe can shine through. Scott Kazmir, of course, has some experience, excuse me, if they do decide to use him at all in this postseason. He has some experience. Littell's emerged. You have McGee and Rodgers, who are some of the better relievers out there. You have Alex Wood, who's been in the postseason before, who can start or come out of the pen because it's all hands on deck, especially in a five-game uh, series. You're going to start using starters out of the pen. We've already seen it this postseason. So I think both of these teams line up to have full-blown, just have both great full-blown pitching staffs. The only difference is, the Dodgers have a little bit more proven of one because they got Mad Max on there and a guy in Walker Bueller who's looked like a Cy Young candidate since he's woke wo wo woke up excuse me, and walked into the league. So now when it comes to the lineups, <clears throat> you obviously, just because of how stacked on paper the Giants lineup, or not the Giants, the Dodgers lineup is, you have to give that just slightly to the Dodgers, not by the numbers per se, but just by how stacked it is on paper, but with how good the Giants have done this year, who unfortunately are going to be out of Brandon Belt in the postseason to start, who still says he's injured here, according to my um thing here on the 10-day, um, still with his broken thumb. You're going to have Crawford still, who was electric this year. You got Lestella. You got Ruff, who's come from overseas and been absolutely dirty. Evan Longoria is a veteran, not the same Evan Longo as he used to be. But he's still a good player that has playoff experience. Donovan Solano can rake and hit it to any side of the field. Unfortunately, Dickerson's dealing with that day-to-day, -day, but he was put on the roster, so I'm sure he's going to be okay. you got Duggar, who emerged this year. you got Chris Bryan, who we know can hit. Lamonte Wade, late in the game, you definitely don't want Lamonte Wade up. Late Lamonte Wade is going to destroy you. Or late game Lamonte Wade, excuse me, is going to destroy you. Austin Slater, a lefty killer. So they have the righty and lefty killer, Wade and... Uh, Slater tandem there. Then you got Mike Yastrzemski, of course, the grandson of the great Carl Yastrzemski. So this team is also, I must say, that have to say, has a great lineup. It's just not as much of the name brand still in the peak prime of their career, guys. They got those veterans I mentioned mixed in with the Bryant, who are still in the peak prime of their career, and the guys that are starting to emerge, like the Duggars of the world, 
Ruff coming back and really emerging and having the best season of his career. So they got a very good thoroughbred lineup. They just do not have the same name brand in comparison to the Dodgers. I do think this is going to be, though, a pretty well-pitched series, even with both of these offenses, because they do have very good pitchers. As such, the Braves and Brewers have very good pitchers and offense, and it's 0-0 right now in the sixth inning. I think there will be games like that where it's going to be whose offense emerges first to be able to get the Ws in this game. Since they start <clears throat> at home and were able to get the advantage in the series, I think this series is going to be a brute battle of five games. And since I think it's going to be that is the first time these teams met the brute rivalries. I think it's going to be a fantastic series, a great battle, like I said, 2-5 game. Because of that, I feel like I'm going to lean slightly towards the San Francisco Giants. Gabe Kapler, who's managed them greatly this year, learned from something in Philly and really also just had the support of his ownership and GM to actually do his job rather than the nonsense factory it was in Philadelphia. He was able to have some success, well not some success, I would have fantastic success in San Francisco where the sports books are going to be losing money if they have fantastic success in the postseason, but I will lean slightly to them because they've been doing it all season. My, like, heart, just because of how, not my heart, my mind, just because of how good the Dodgers have been for all these years, wants to go there, but my heart and just the gut with how consistent the Dod or the Dodgers, the Giants have been this year, even also while playing the Dodgers, they've looked fine. I think I'm going to have to lean slightly to the Giants because of the home field advantage team. I think it's going to go five, and they're going to have the home field advantage in game five, and they're going to be able to give it back to the youngster, Logan Webb, who I think is going to have a good outing tonight as well, going up against Walker Buehler. Not an easy task for a kid to go up against Buehler, who's another kid, but has the more experience. So we'll see how that fares out, but I think it will go well. I hope you all enjoyed this preview to the series between the Giants and Dodgers. The first time they play each other in the playoffs, it's going to be electric, folks. Please like, comment, and subscribe down below or on the widget above if you enjoyed the content. Have a great day and pleasant day, everybody. Peace out.